Paul, you know it's 2020 when A.J. Klein puts together one of the most impressive Bills games in the 2020 season. Can you believe he tackled people from the front today? <laughs> Stop. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> Was, AJ Klein punching people in the face. So I guess, I guess, could we venture to say that in the three phases of Lorenzo Alexander, like if, if Lorenzo Alexander over the last two years, he was the Mick Foley of the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> well, he's got both his ears. That's would, not no, fair to no, say. No, no, that's not fair. But Lorenzo was, Alexander has both ears. Honestly, when, when Zoe had his hand in the dirt, he was mankind. When he was yeah. up as a linebacker, he was dude love. And when you asked him to do a bunch of different things, um, he was Cactus Jack in there. But he was the ultimate Swiss Army knife for the Buffalo Bills and something that, that this defense looks like it was missing for a majority of the year. And he's a guy that's a very experienced guy. He was getting guys where they needed to go. He was great for the, the new guys that were coming in on the team. He was awesome. AJ Klein showed you one of those phases where, okay, mm -hmm. the, the Zoe that puts his hand in the dirt or blitzes or gets after the quarterback or is able just to pin his ears back and do that. He showed you he can do that phase. Mm -hmm. um, the Seahawks weren't going to run the ball with the third and fourth string running back. They weren't going to do that. You weren't mm -hmm. asking him to go into coverage. Nope. So that being said, with the does that give you any kind of promise as far as Klein goes for the rest of the season, or do you think he's just this one dimensional linebacker at this point? So I think you know enough about AJ Klein at this point to know what he does well enough. Yeah. Um, and you know what he can't do. Right. And the bills did a really good job today of eliminating opportunities for him to do the things that he doesn't do so well. Um, like he walked away from the Seattle game with four QB hits, right? Like mm -hmm. he was back there the whole game. And he did, uh, let's see here, he comes away with two sacks, uh, one tackle for loss, four QB hits, and a, and a fumble, and a forced fumble, mm -hmm. right? Like, this is the pinnacle of his Bills career, is, is this game against Seattle. Yeah. Now, I think the next question is, well, Milano's on the IR. Can the Bills survive Milano being on the IR with A.J. Klein playing at this level? Well, I think this is an isolated incident, right? I I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, this is the pinnacle of his bills career. And this is kind of where, you know, you put this on film, Arizona is not going to miss it, no. but I don't think you're going to see a game like this from him against Arizona. Cause Arizona can actually run the football. And yes. with the bills today, the bills could bring all sorts of pressure because AJ Klein could sell out against the blitz because you knew they weren't going to run right? You were totally fine cleaning it up on the back end behind him if you had to. Um, so for you, right, if we're looking at the depth chart of this team, are you are you okay with where we are with Milano going on IR post this AJ Klein game? Or, you know, what kind of packages do you think the Bills need to look at that were successful today that might be successful against Arizona to kind of keep this production of AJ Klein on life support? Because I got to be honest with you, to me, this was a perfect storm. Oh, what? Well, all the planets aligned today for A.J. Klein and as far yeah. as his Bills career is concerned. Yeah. That, that's why I tried to bring up Zoe at the beginning. And uh, I'm not sure how many people would probably agree or disagree with my assessment of him, but Zoe, Zoe was a Swiss Army knife. And Klein mm -hmm. showed one of the facets of Zoe's game was getting after the quarterback and pinning his ears mm -hmm. back. But he, he was better than Klein in the fact that he was able to disguise different things. There wasn't really much disguising what Klein was going to mm -hmm. be doing today. He, was he in coverage? Rarely. Did he come up to stop the run? Well, the one the one play, he took a horrible angle after he shed the block. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was Homer ended up getting, you know, five, ten more yards out of the carry. Right. But that's, and that's <clears> been par for the course it with has. the line the entire it season. Has. It has. Yeah. And um, it was also a reflection on the Buffalo Bills staff because, you know, mm -hmm. you're putting this guy out there time in and time again. I think against Kansas City, he had like 88% of the snaps. And mm -hmm. with that, he wasn't performing very well, so this, that reflects right. poorly on the brass. But before I get on to my, my, my point about this, Paul, is I want you to explain to Hashtag Nation about how the <laughs> IR this year specifically works. Because you know what? Yeah. It was very it was timed beautifully by the Buffalo Bills to put him on IR just before Seattle. So why did, can you right. explain that in, in the weeks to come as far as the Bills? Yeah, are? right. So 
new to 2020 are those new IR rules. And what those rules ultimately do is they allow you to return a player from IR, but at a significantly different time than what we've seen previously. Previously, uh, a player would have to miss eight games, and then you only had two players you could bring back from IR. Well, this year with, you know, the fact that teams kind of assumed that a lot of players would be going through IR, especially with COVID out there, uh, they weren't exactly sure how that was going to work. They instituted that a player could return from IR after only three weeks. And another thing they put in was an unlimited number of players could return from IR after three weeks. So yes, Matt Milano does go on IR. He does miss this game under the rules. He has to miss three games. Okay. Well, let's just pull that back. He has to miss three weeks, right? So yes, he misses Seattle. That's week one. He's going to miss Arizona. That's week two by week counts. So he's going to, he's going to be uh, the bye week is going to count as that final third week and then he'll be able to return for the chargers game uh and mind you matt milano is clearly needed to go on ir for some time like yes. his snap his snap percentage is in the basement uh he's only been in there really in, in sure passing downs and even when he was in there you could tell things just weren't right yeah. um and the bills kind of kept him on life support for a while um until they were able to bring delshawn phillips back and now that delshawn phillips is back they're like okay well we're probably good enough to at least make it through Seattle and Arizona, right? Yes. Now, let me ask you this. Had Chris Carson been healthy, does Matt Milano go on the IR? He does. You still think he puts you still think think he put him on because IR? Because for the same reason that you made, and first of all, your point about how the Buffalo Bills, because a lot of people were questioning, why is he only playing 15 snaps? Why is he only playing third downs? Why is he only, this guy's hurt. Let's just, yeah. let's just get through that right away. This guy is mm-hmm. hurt. They didn't want to put him on IR yet. If they needed him in passing downs, he's still a presence in there. It's mm-hmm. almost like the, hey, make him think you're weak when you're strong type deal. You know, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Make him think you're strong when you're weak. The way that Milano is when he's in the game, it's going to get the, the attention of the quarterback that he's playing against. And that he can, he's able to do that in coverage. Carson being such a physical runner, I don't think you bring him back in those downs. I think mm-hmm. if you were going to make him active, you would have made him back just, just for the same amount. You're not going to risk losing – one of your top linebackers to an NFC opponent. Because as we all know, the Buffalo Bills, and as any team, you take care of your division, you take care of your conference. The out of conference games, okay, you need those, but they're not as important as your own conference in trying to make the playoffs and make a run. 100% so. agree. And I think that's an underplay dynamic all the time. We talk mm-hmm. all the time, like, if you're, okay, you're probably going to lose six games this year, right? Like, you just look at a good team, five to six losses is typically what happens to good teams, right? Yes. Yeah. You're like, okay, how many NFC games are we playing? Those are the games that we can lose. Those right? are the games you can lose. And then you those, think those about it, what did they do? Lose. They IR him before Seattle and mm-hmm. Arizona and a bye right. week. So none yep. of the AFC games... Yeah, he, he's going to be IR absolutely for. right. So this could absolutely have been a calculated right. plan by the brass in, 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 at one bill's drive to say, listen, you're still a presence. We're still going to give you in the flow of the game. So you're not as immediately rusty when you come back. We're going to test out of certain things that are going on with you. We're going to IR you because, you know, Phillips is coming back. We just signed Lee. All right. Well, this is what the plan is in place. And the other thing about it, which is your wheelhouse too, Paul, is the fact of he's coming up for a deal. I don't think he wants to mm-hmm. injure himself without a new deal. So this could give right. him and his agent time to discuss, possibly because of his injury history, a reasonable deal for the Buffalo Bills to try to mm-hmm. strike with him going into the bye week and coming out of the bye week. Because that could be the bye week news for the Buffalo Bills. If they beat, let's just say they beat Arizona and they go into the bye week at 8-2 and two, and all of this talk mm-hmm. is about them making a Super Bowl run, what better way to deflect from a Super Bowl mm-hmm. run to, to take pressure off of your team than announcing a signing of a player. Well, and I I just want to make sure that everybody's real clear on this. The Bills signed AJ Klein to a three-year deal, knowing that Matt Milano was on a contract here, yes. right? AJ Klein was ultimately the contingency plan. And prior to the game in Seattle, everybody in their right mind would say, okay, well, Matt Milano's writing his own check. AJ Klein is giving it to him, right? Like, yes. thank you. Take AJ Klein out to dinner when you sign your extension, because it will be because of him that you're getting the extension that you're going to get, right? Like that's, that's where we are. And I don't think the Seattle game repaints that situation no. at all because AJ Klein was very one dimensional in that game. He had to be, to be effective. He was very one dimensional. I don't expect to see that level of play from him again, at least from a production standpoint, because most, most teams can run the football and Seattle clearly couldn't, uh, mm-hmm. you know, this last Sunday, but um, 
Matt Milano himself, if if you're looking at the snap percentage that he was playing, you know the coaching staff and ownership must have gone to him. I'm going to wildly speculate here, but you don't go to a player who's hurt and say, listen, Delshawn's not ready to come back. When Delshawn comes back, we're going to limit your snap count. Let's let's get Delshawn back so that way, you know, <laughs> we've, we've got a little more depth at linebacker, and then we're going to push you to IR. By the way, you know, tick, 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 let's, let's you know, start talking about an extension, yeah, right? Because exactly. there's there's no way in the world that his agent – would have not raised absolute hell for a player in a contract year playing 22% of the snaps or whatever he was playing, clearly injured and been okay with that. Agents are there to protect their players and a player who's clearly hurt when you have IR rules that allow you to come back. There, there was no reason for Matt Milano to be playing other than the Bills and Milano and his agent said, we're going to take a calculated risk here, but we're going to trust us. We're going we're gonna to take care of you. Like th- this move tells me that the Bills and Matt Milano are really looking down the road at a future. And uh, Adrian Klein is, is a very large part of the reason why they're looking down the road for Matt Milano. Yeah, I mean, the, the fact is, and we have we can't be remiss about this, is that, yes, Milano was drafted by Sean McDermott. However, mm-hmm. the GM at that time was the linebacker uh, guru in Doug Whaley. Mm-hmm. Right. So... Mm-hmm. Whaley was the guy that was always finding these guys, these linebackers in the in the third round and later that were just real. They were just steals. Mm-hmm. Um, so that he came from Pittsburgh, he knew what a linebacker looked like in a specific right. defense. So right. we have to really remember that. So that could be a guy that they really want to hang on to. Milano being a fifth round pick, I know you wouldn't mm-hmm. you know break the bank for a fifth round pick. No, but it, like you said, the way that Klein's been playing. You, you, you said to yourself, if Klein was playing at Matt Milano's level, you, Matt Milano would be playing out there hurt. Right. You're saying that he would. But, you know, that being said, he's like, listen, he, he doesn't have the type of production I do. He can't cover like I can. He can't do all these things. And I understand that. So, I, I you know, I'm 100% in, in the camp with you to think that they, they're probably going on an extension, but they're keeping in the back of their mind the conscious fact that you know, you've been hurt majority of your career. Right. Even though you're a talented player and you're a talented linebacker and you fit our system, mm-hmm. it's going to be, you know, we may have to get a little bit of a discount here for you because you're number mm-hmm. one, you're undersized. Number two, you have a little bit of an injury history and that we have right. to cover our bases in that as yeah. well. So I, I think it was so it was it's unbelievably calculated by the Buffalo Bills. The fact is now that you IR him between before two NFC games and a bye yep. week. To try to get him healthy. Now you have four weeks to get him ready to come back to play against the Chargers, mm-hmm. um, which is another pass happy team. That's a guy you sure. need Milano for. That's a team you right. need Milano for. They have right. a they have a um, they have a uh, you know running back by committee, but they're always throwing the ball to the running backs. So mm-hmm. it's one of those things that you have to be very conscious for. So I'm interested to see what happens on that bye week about Milano. But um, yeah, as far as Klein goes, I think we've seen the max of his ability because you're not going to play another team that's as one dimensional as Seattle was on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't that Seattle has been one dimensional this whole season. This is just what attrition does to you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is just what happens. And then you look down the road at the rest of the schedule. I mean, San Francisco is as banged up as banged up gets right They're in, they're in terrible shape. Uh, The chargers are just now finding out what they are as a team. They're starting a rookie quarterback. Who's going out there. He's throwing for 300 yards and they can't win a game. Yeah. You know, like it's it's not like they're not scoring points. They're scoring enough points, but they just think they can't seem to put it together. But you start looking down this road and Big Ben, that was that was a that looks that injury looks bad. Big Ben is in for some trouble. And Pittsburgh hasn't lost a game yet, but they're probably not gonna win. You know, they're too they're many. gonna no. they're not gonna win, you know, they're not gonna win too many more with Mason Rudolph, and that game's later on your schedule. And you still the Patriots you have to go through again, the second last game of the season. I mean, you're really looking, if you're a Bills fan, you're looking at 12 and four and you're looking up at the division. But, you know, as far as the linebacker group itself um, and, and how all that record plays into the linebacker group, you're doing a really good job of figuring out your matchups ahead of the game and figuring out how to put your guys in the right position. Right. Klein asking him to be effective today only as a pass rusher. It was a great call. But another thing that the Bills did was Tremaine Edmonds was very effective today. There's one of this is probably the best game Tremaine's played all season. Absolutely. And I think it's interesting to note Tremaine Edmonds has had one tackle for loss all season. Right. 
He's only had one the entire season so far. And today he walks in with not only a QB hit, but two tackles for loss and a sack. Yeah. Right. But do you think Tremaine was more effective today for the same reason that AJ Klein was? The game was simpler for him today. Well, you know, when you don't have to worry about the run, it definitely simplifies the game for you. It's almost like you make a team one dimensional by going up by 20 points. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you're able to account for certain things that they're going to do and what they're not going to do. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, the, the Seahawks didn't even run too many screens today to their running backs to try to get no. that pressure to alleviate some of it. Mm-hmm. So, um, that when you make a team one-dimensional, it's very, very easy. And it seemed like Seattle came into the day very one-dimensional. The mm-hmm. thing that I'm interested in, to ask you, Paul, and this may be for another episode, do you think that Darren Lee who's a guy that you said needs to put out tape in order to get his next deal. Yep. You think that was because of Klein playing the way he's playing? Do you think that was another warning sign for Milano to say, hey, we're still going to look other places if you don't want to sign? Because he's a guy I mean, that's going to run through a wall for this mm-hmm. team. Right, absolutely. Uh, and that there's a very large possibility there, right? You take a look at the way Sierra Neal and Dean Marlowe played against Seattle and you're like, okay, well we could keep things going if that's yeah. effective, right? Um, the bills did a lot of really great things against Seattle that you hope can start translating, but you know, and this is a big question for me, Mar, and, and I want you to tell me, and, and again, maybe this is a topic for a different episode. The bills have played 40 plus games with this person, you know, a- across the, uh, for the major part of this personnel group, right? There's a lot of this personnel that's really been pretty similar, right? For about 40 games. Was this the first time in a long time that we've seen, a big change in dynamic and is this the new identity of the defense going forward or is this what you did because the matchups told you that this is what you should do like after 40 games it's got to get easier to scout right it's it's definitely got to get easier to scout and i think mcdermott needs to i think he has a hold of that him and frazier have a hold of that and say listen this team has been together for a while a lot of those games that you're talking about those 40 plus games that they've played together you've had white hyde poyer and edmonds Mm -hmm. and milano usually um, mm-hmm. That cor- cornerback two is switched around the defensive front. Uh, you have a d- new defensive line coach mm-hmm. in there, so maybe that's the switch up that's not really co- he- be really cohesive this year. But mm-hmm. majority of like you said, the pieces they didn't bring in a wow factor. They really no. didn't. You drafted no. in the second round AJ Epineza. That wasn't a wow factor. Mario mm-hmm. Addison not a wow factor. AJ right. Klein, we know. Norman, no. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you brought in dependable pieces. You're a hundred percent right there. So let me ask this, right? Looking at, you know, AJ Klein's not the answer here, right? Like yeah. he's, he really should be at this point, more of a, more of a, a pass down guy and a special teams contributor, right? Like ultimately that's what you want. Those from are him. those roles that he should fill. Those are those roles, right? Um, but is Matt Milano that wow factor? I don't think that Russell Wilson throws for any less yards than 390 just because Milano's there. Okay. I just don't think I, I think he still puts up those numbers because okay. Milano's strength is to the tight ends and the backs. He's good right. at taking out tight ends and backs. Wilson wasn't yep. going there today. Yeah, that wasn't. He yeah, was going to his wideouts. So yep. um, maybe in the in the blitz factor, you know. But uh, as far as when you have a healthy Matt Milano, you have a healthy Tremaine Edmonds, coupled with a guy on that that has his hand in the dirt that could take bodies off of those two guys, they could fly around the field. And that's mm-hmm. the one thing probably which contributed to both Edmonds and Milano's injuries this year was the fact that they had guards coming at them with free reign, like four yards yeah. off the ball. And yeah. being that Edmonds is so tall and Milano is so undersized, that probably contributed to what was going on with them this year. And I still, yeah. think, I still think Edmonds is hurt, but that's a topic for another day. But my point is yeah. this. I don't think that Milano in the game today switched up anything for, for Seattle. I think that's, yeah. that's the reason why the Bills made that move. I agree wholeheartedly. The lack of a preseason, the Bills had to kind of play tango with chemistry across, a, again, com- almost completely remade defensive line. Yes. You take a look, Phillips wasn't there last year, right? You Now Ed Oliver and Phillips are going to play next to each other. Okay, but you also lost Jordan Phillips, and so now you're bringing in Vernon Butler. You just signed uh, Mario Addison. Yes, you still have Hughes and Trent Murphy, but the reality is you replaced half that defensive line. You did. You replaced half of them and they were playing tango at the beginning of the season. And I agree. Uh, the linebackers were taking the beating 
uh, early on, way more damage than required. Um, because again, you didn't have the opportunity in the preseason to figure out what, what you were really looking for. And I still think they're still looking for that. You know, I, I still, I still believe they're still looking for the right, uh, the right chemistry in the right situations. You know, I, I don't think they figured it out yet. Yeah. I mean, you got the, the faces of Zoe, like I said, mm-hmm. with the linebackers, one got his hand in the dirt, one plays up and one's a special teams guy. So yep. if, if, um, if Klein can play with his hand in the dirt and be your special teams guy and Darren Lee is the guy that plays up, they have correctly supplemented Zoe for you. Mm-hmm. Right. Who knows? We'll have to take a look at the weeks to come to see what happens. 